What has been so striking to me about the Cincinnati Bengals over the past couple of years is how quickly the fortunes, the trajectory of this organization has changed. Like not a little bit in a positive direction. Tremendously. Tremendously. And I look at combination of 2021 and 2022, and I say this unabashedly, it's no hyperbole, it's anything else. I'm a bit of an old man. Um, this is the best two-year stretch of Bengals football that I've seen in my lifetime. And I'm certainly old enough to remember, you know, the year that they played the 49ers in the Super Bowl. Was that Super Bowl 23? Yeah. And you're talking about the Montana comeback, the touchdown pass to John Taylor, all of that. Like, I remember that. I was seven years old when that happened. So, yes, I can absolutely remember that. I remember Jerry Rice going off in that game for over 200 yards receiving. And, you know, that was a great Bengals team that just didn't happen to get the job done. But this right here is the best two-year stretch of Bengals football that I have seen in my lifetime. They certainly aren't the Bungles of old. Like, I mean, you figure this is a team in the 90s spending an entire decade being known as the Bungles, and deservably so. And when those of you that have followed me and watched me for a long time, you hear me talk about the skid marks of the NFL being the Browns. The skid marks of the NFL used to be the Cincinnati Bengals. Like, they were god-awful. They were terrible. I could go on and on and on. And what I look at the Cincinnati Bengals as is a perfect representation of what any every single NFL franchise hopes for when they take a quarterback in the first round, especially if you take one number one overall. And now that's not to say that Joe Burrow is the magic man that made everything else you know, irrelevant or made everything else so much better. But he certainly didn't hurt. He was a big piece of that. For a guy to me, frankly, that early on in 2021, like he looked mid. He did not look good. To see his growth and development over the past two years, like I got to give him his props. The dude is a franchise quarterback. When you think about franchise quarterback, a phrase that is often overused. Just because a guy starts for your team for a number of years does not make him a franchise quarterback. Kirk Cousins has been a starter in the NFL for a long time with the Washington football team. We know what their name was before. Now the Commanders. And then the Minnesota Vikings. Kirk Cousins is a good NFL starting quarterback. He is an above average NFL starting quarterback. But he is not that level of dude. He is not a carry a franchise type of quarterback. Joe Burrow has shown over the past two years that he is a carry the franchise type of quarterback. So when you're talking about the Bengals and having that number one overall pick in 2020, there's even more pressure when you're in a draft where it's not so obvious that there's only one QB to take. There was Tua, and then there certainly was Justin Herbert, right? Like there were options there, but they locked in on Burrow, and that's who they were going to take. And they clearly haven't regretted it since. And everything else they've done as an organization, it all ties back to the drafting of Joe Burrow and getting that right. Because now you're talking about the Cincinnati Bengals not just being a flash in the pan or having a brief run. Like you're talking about a team that could be in a sustained period of contention and in the mix for a long time to come. And I didn't think I was going to be talking about the Bengals in this light after this season because... Yeah, remember, they didn't get off to a good start this year at all. They started off 0-2. They kind of stunk. And even halfway, about halfway through the season, they were sitting at 4-4. Four and four. Like Their offense was kind of out of rhythm, and I don't think Burrow looked great. Like, yeah, they were kind of in a rough spot. Jamar Chase missed some games. But again, when you talk about a team like this coming off of the Super Bowl loss, maybe there was a bit of an initial Super Bowl hangover. I don't know. But they really pieced it together the second half of the year to the point where the last eight regular season games that they played and started and actually finished, they won them all. A lot of people were picking this team to go to the Super Bowl out of the AFC. And I look at this team and where my respect level went up for them as well is the whole situation what happened in the Monday night game with DeMar Hamlin. That was a really tough spot. Like Zach Taylor and Sean McDermott, when the league we all freaking know good and well was trying to force them to go back out there and play, those two coaches came together and said, yeah, we're not, we're not playing. The guys don't want to play. We don't want to play. We're not doing this. Like, respect level goes up there. That's some OG shit. Like, stick it to yourself, NFL. Um, but you, we could talk about how much 
that moment in time impacted the Buffalo Bills, and it certainly did. You can't deny that. I talked about it in my Buffalo Bills season recap and shared a story, you know, from my high school days and talked about, like, I saw how that impacted a team close up. Seeing a guy literally be clinically dead on the field and then be resuscitated back to life, doing the thing that you're doing is not an easy thing to put out of your mind. Well, it wasn't just the Bills on the field that night. It was also the Cincinnati Bengals. So they also had to deal with that. It also disrupted the rhythm of their season. You know, It could have thrown a lot of things off kilter. And for the Bengals to be able to get past that and still put a really good run together here in the playoffs was really impressive stuff for Zach Taylor, the head coach, Joe Burrow, that entire locker room. You know, um, That wild card round game against the Ravens admittedly was really ugly. And they might not have won it without that big Sam Hubbard fumble return touchdown. But you could also say, hey, really good teams and big spots can make some big plays happen to get the job done. And that's what they did there. But they certainly came back in that divisional round at the, against the Bills in Buffalo. And they spanked them, man. I mean, they dominated them. They jumped on them early and never let up. They were able to feast against the Bills' defense when they needed to, and the Bengals' defense made Josh Allen look not very good that day. The Bills' offense looked not very good that day. That's a performance right there where a lot of people are starting to think, hey, you know what? They might be able to beat the Chiefs again. They could go into Arrowhead and beat the Chiefs. They're not afraid of the Chiefs. They've beaten the Chiefs before. They'll certainly beat them again, and it might be in the AFC Championship game. So that had to be a really tough, like, gutting loss for them and their fan base because they had a chance. They were positioned. And I wouldn't even say they played terribly. It's just, ultimately, it didn't happen for them. They didn't get the job done, which is a shame because you're talking about a really good team in the Bengals that really pieced it together the second half of the year and the second straight season that it really ended up in heartbreak on late field goals. That's tough shit right there. It really is. But... Take heart, Bengals fans. Those of you that have certainly have been around a long time, you know you are, you are entering the peak era in Cincinnati Bengals history. You know that's not hyperbole uh, to say that. You know that's not recency bias for me to say that. You know you are potentially also well positioned to you know, kind of run that AFC North division for the next several years. Most importantly of all, you got some great talent on that team on both sides of the ball, but beyond all else, you know you got Joe Cool, Joe Burrow at the helm at the quarterback position. And your thought is, is that, man, at some point, the Bengals are going to be able to win a Super Bowl. They got to get over the hump. And I agree with you. At some point, they probably can, but it's not easy, right? Because we know that AFC is a dogfight and might even become more of a dogfight in the years to come. But if I have confidence in a team being able to get out of that dogfight and go win a Super Bowl from the AFC right now. Obviously, it's the Kansas City Chiefs for good reason. And I would put the Cincinnati Bengals way ahead of the Buffalo Bills based off of what I saw in the playoffs, based off of what I saw this season. So buck up, Bengals fans. It's been worse. It's been a lot, lot worse for you. And you're this close to going all the way.